Hello again. In this episode, we'll be using this printout, uh, there's a link to the PDF file down in the description, and uh, we'll be using this to make a few accessories that you might find in a nest of giant spiders, or, or something like that. So, to begin with, we'll first take a piece of thick card, uh, greyboard, chipboard, whatever you want to call it, and, uh, and that needs to be two or three inches square. And we'll also cut out one of these pieces from the PDF. Then we'll apply some glue to the back of the paper piece and stick that to the middle of the cardboard piece. There you go. Next we'll take the glue gun and we'll first make a ring of hot glue in the area marked out by the circle and then kind of blend that down onto the card so that it looks a little bit like a tiny crater, if that makes sense. Then we'll leave that to dry and do the same thing again just to build up this kind of crater shape in three or four stages. Um, you know, letting the glue dry in between. So, uh, yeah, if I were to cut it in half, this cross section here, that's the kind of thing that we're aiming for. And with any luck, this is how it should look when we've done that. So, uh, hopefully you can see what I've done there. Okay then, next we'll need to cut out this texture, and we're going to need to scrunch that up several times, just to make it nice and malleable. Then we'll flatten it back out, and make lots of little cuts all the way around the outside, um, maybe around a centimetre or a half inch long. There you go. Next we'll apply some glue to the back, um, being careful not to tear it, and, and then we'll push the darker central portion of the texture inside that little hot glue crater. And uh, if you're struggling with that, then you can also use something like the eraser on the end of this pencil, um, just to help push it down into place. And once we're happy with that, it's then just a matter of sticking the rest of the texture down all around the outside of the crater, um, doing our best to make sure that there's no glue or cardboard showing through. So I'll just go over the middle section one last time to make sure it's stuck down, and, uh, and there you go. As you can hopefully see, that's now starting to look like a hole in the ground. Anyway, we'll just need to give that a few minutes for the glue to set, so to speed things up a bit, here's one that's already dry. And all we'll need to do now is cut that out with a sharp pair of scissors and ideally cut it into a slightly irregular shape. And there's the finished piece. So these can be used to represent entrances into spider tunnels beneath the forest floor perhaps, or maybe into a giant spider nest underneath a dungeon room, or they could even be used in conjunction with the graveyard set, um, you know, to mark areas where skeletons or zombies have dug their way to the surface. Either way, we can make three of these from each printout. Okay, next we'll glue this texture to some thin cereal box style card, and this time we're going to apply some glue over the entire shape. Um, essentially, we're just trying to make a little humanoid shape out of hot glue, uh, using the pattern underneath as a basic guide. And like before, it's best to build this up in stages. So, as you can see, I'm doing the second layer of hot glue now, and then I'll leave it to dry again, and I personally think that three layers of hot glue is about the right amount. So here I am finishing off that last layer, and this is the kind of thing that we're trying to achieve. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, just roughly human-like in shape. Okay, then all we'll need to do is cut that out, um, just using a sharp pair of scissors again, and trying to cut it as close to the glue as possible. And that should result in something like this. So. A little hot glue jelly baby almost. Right then, next we'll cut out an inch wide piece of the darker web texture. Uh, there's actually some guides on the printout if you look carefully. And uh, like before, we'll scrunch that up several times to make it nice and malleable and ready for the next stage. Then, not surprisingly, we'll apply some glue to the back and we're going to place our little figure in the middle of that and then make lots of little cuts all around the outside, like you can see me doing here, and, uh, and then cut away any areas where there's going to be a lot of excess paper. And once we've done all of that, we can start wrapping the texture around the hot glue figure. It's, uh, it's a similar process to how we made the mummies back in episode 36. However, it was a pretty hot day when I was filming this, so the glue kept drying out and I was having to apply more and more as I was going along, but uh, in the end, when all of that's done and the texture has been squashed into all the nooks and crannies, um, we should end up with something that looks like this. But at the moment, it doesn't look very convincing, so uh, what we'll need to do next is cut out the longer, lighter web texture, and from that, we'll cut a very narrow strip, like a millimetre wide. 
if that. And all we're going to do with this is apply some glue to the back and, uh, and then wrap that around our little cocooned human so that this narrow strip is at a different angle to the main web texture and so that it kind of crisscrosses itself in several areas. And uh, as you can see, I am applying the glue in stages just to prevent it drying out in the heat again. Um, I'm not sure I've explained that very well, but uh, when you see the finished piece at the end of all this, it should hopefully make a bit more sense. So here I am gluing on the last bit now, though I will need to put some more glue on the end again. And, uh, and there you go. Hopefully you can now see how these crisscrossing strands, they, they make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, well, you know, as realistic as it can be for a full-size person to be wrapped up in spider silk. Anyway, next we'll glue one of the oval bases to some more thick card. And cut that to size. There you go. Then it's just a simple matter of hot glue in the cocoon to the base. And uh, it works best if you have the head facing in the same direction as the arrow. And that should result in this kind of thing. And uh, by adding this base, it just makes it look a bit more like a body wrapped in webs. So, there's our little spider victim, or possibly several spider victims, that the PCs might need to rescue. Okay, for this next piece, we'll glue this texture to some thick card. And when it's dry, we'll cut that to size. Then we'll take some regular polystyrene packing foam, uh, you know, that stuff that gets everywhere, and uh, all we're going to do with this is try to break some of it away so that we're left with a kind of cluster of little white spheres. Um, though we do want to keep the bottom flat if we can, and, uh, and make sure that it fits inside the center of the base that we just made. Then it's just a matter of gluing the polystyrene to the base, uh, like you can see me doing here, and that should end up looking something like this. So, a cluster of giant spider eggs. And I know some might say that you could cover them in a dried out baby wipe. Um, I've done a similar thing myself with, air quotes, proper terrain in the past. Um, or a used dryer sheet. Uh, or even that Halloween cobweb stuff. But uh, I don't think it needs it, to be honest. Um, plus, you'd probably need to cover that stuff in PVA before draping it over the eggs. And uh, if the paper underneath gets wet, um, the ink has a tendency of smudging or changing colour. Um, usually a bright green in my experience. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the spider eggs, though I have also provided a couple of spider swarm tokens that, you know, you might like to use if someone decides to disturb these eggs. Plus, since I had some room on the page, I've also included a cobweb-covered treasure token as well. So, here's a quick look at all of the different pieces that we can make from this PDF, and as an encounter idea, perhaps, you could maybe have something where your players are escorting some NPCs through a creepy forest, when, all of a sudden, one by one, the NPCs start disappearing. And uh, that's when the players realise that they're right on top of a giant spider nest. And uh, the villagers, they're actually being dragged down, kind of trapdoor spider style, into the tunnels below. Um, the entrances to which I've marked on the map with a little X. And the holes that we've just made, we can use those to indicate the entrances to these tunnels, um, or at least the ones the players are aware of. And... All the players have to do now is decide if they want to go down into these cramped tunnels and maybe risk fighting in single file, um, or they might choose to split up and take an entrance each and hope that they can save more villagers that way, or they could just wait above ground and see if they can lure out any more of the spiders, um, possibly getting ambushed themselves by even more spiders that are coming out of holes that they've not spotted yet. But if they do venture down into the tunnels, the, the spiders' victims, they could already be wrapped up in webs, um, there might be clusters of eggs here and there where spider swarms can burst out of, uh, if the PCs get too close to them that is, and uh, of course, there'll likely be a couple of giant spiders to battle as well. And on that note, I think I'll bring this episode to a close. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, obviously, you might want to give this project a miss if you have anyone that's seriously arachnophobic in your group, but uh, if you are going to make some of this stuff, I'd love to know what you think of them, and how you might be going about putting them to use. So, Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.